Hello everyone, Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense. Thank you for watching. I have another Monday quarterback video for you. I'm going to play this video and talk about things that are going on. I better explain what's going on and talk about things that I think that are being done right and are done wrong. Here we go. This briefing will provide information about an officer-involved shooting involving members of the New York City Police Department. You will see relevant video footage and other available evidence that will allow you to gain a better understanding of the events that led up to the incident and what occurred during the incident based on the facts that we know at this time. Viewer discretion is advised, especially for young children and sensitive viewers. God damn, 130 fucking rounds. <laughs> if this dude survives, holy shit, dude. So six of them, 100. <laughs> damn. If this dude survives, then he is one lucky dude. All right, so let's. Let's pause this. So one, two, three, four, five. Oh, wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. So, fuck, man. These three down here, thirty fucking rounds. <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> Holy fuck, that's a lot. That's a lot. Like that really is. That is. That's a. That's a lot of ammo. I mean. They is like these three right here for sure, for sure, fired to slide lock, reloaded, and fired again, and possibly to slide lock again, or damn near right to slide lock again, depending on um, what kind of weapon they had. This guy too, he he could have also fired the slide lock and had to do a reload or he could have had a Glock 17 and still fired the slide lock um, or uh, fired to just have one round left these two or I'm sorry these three did not fire a whole lot but shit man like that's <laughs> I'm not saying it's I'm not saying firing it's I'm not saying that shooting at someone 32 times is bad I mean, I'm the I'm a believer that anything worth shooting once is worth shooting twice. But thirty two fucking times, like something is going on there. Like you are not getting good hits. Uh, you're not even hitting the target. If you are, then they're one bad motherfucker. Um, and your shot placement is not hitting anything critical. And obviously, this is this has to be all pistol stuff. There's no way. Um, you know, out of all these shots fired, and they, if they hit them some amount of times, some of them being rifle, I, I just don't think that we would have this high of a round count if a rifle had been involved. If a rifle had been involved, way less rounds being needed here. One, because that rifle is going to be more accurate, be able to hit them within the first few rounds, and then secondly, it's kinetic, um, I'm sorry, it's terminal ballistics, are far superior to pistol. The amount of kinetic energy that it dumps, uh, it would only take about a few rounds to drop that threat. Firing the slide lock, although it happens, it's not that common. So when someone's firing the slide lock, one of two things is going on. One, they got a gun that has a very small magazine capacity, or two, they're not making their hits on that first round. They're shooting too fucking fast, uh, faster than what they can accurately hit with. So I'm interested to see what the rest of this video looks like. He got the least amount of rounds off, I think. Hold on. He got four rounds off. 
Yeah. <laughs> one one round less than Matthew. I don't know how to pronounce that. One round less than him. So, bad guy got less rounds off <laughs> than the good guys. <laughs> He was probably so overwhelmed with him the fucking firepower being fired at him. He's probably like, ah, oh, shit, I don't fuck up. <laughs> oh. He got hit. <laughs> nice. So, yeah, that magazine, that's a bullet hole right there. And you look at the frame of the gun. So... Looks like he got shot holding the gun, but it don't see any blood right on the gun, so. But I think that's probably what happened, is he probably got shot holding the gun. Now, that happens sometimes. Um, probably more common than what you think it would be. Um, when people um, are presented with a, a deadly force stimuli, their eyes can focus on it. And so... And gunfights, and especially in like force on force scenarios, you see this a lot. Is uh, people's hands and their forearms get shot up a lot, and sometimes the gun gets hit. Like sometimes uh, guns that have weapon mounted lights on them, the fucking light takes a round from a sim round and fucking busts it. So it's very common because your eyes focus on that threat, and when you're focusing on that, that's where your bullets are going. Kind of like how. Way, like way out in the country, there's like a big field and there's just one tree around and someone loses control of their car and they go off the road into the field and they mir like miraculously end up hitting that one fucking tree out of nowhere. That's why, because they, they're glued, their eyes are glued to that tree because they're worried about it and their arms, without even thinking about it, are causing the, the vehicle to steer towards it. Um, cops on the side of the road getting hit by other cars cop cars full flash full lights flashing and everything getting rear-ended why because people are fucking staring at what the hell's going on rubbernecking and because they're looking that way the car starts to drift that way their arms drift them towards it and then boom they rear end the vehicle so not uh, I wouldn't say it's rare I'm not going to say it's very common. It's somewhere in the middle that uh, you see people's hands and forearms and, and even the gun being struck by gunfire. Now, let me back that up. So with that being said, that's why a backup gun is a good idea. What happens if your gun gets hit and it's a catastrophic hit where you can't get that gun to operate anymore? Like, will this gun stick in? I'm sorry, will this magazine stay stuck into this gun? I, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. That looks like the uh, in, indent right there for the magazine to lock in. So it should still be working. Uh, what if it hit higher? What if that was broken and you, you couldn't even get the magazine to stick in the gun? What if it, you know, cracked right up in here and tore that out and the fucking recoil spring went flying out the front? I, I don't know. Um... Something could happen to the gun where it just doesn't work anymore. And what are you going to do? Well, if you got a backup gun, you can stay in the fight. So that is a benefit to having the backup gun is not so much you run out of ammunition, but if your fucking gun gets shot in a gunfight. And, of course, the other benefits to a backup gun is you can arm someone else who's with you. And it's a reload. It's a spare magazine that just happens to have a fucking gun wrapped around it. <laughs> okay. City 911, do you need police fire and medical? Oh, thank you, 911 Police Department. 
Uh, my name is Raul Antonio Hardy. And um, uh, I'm giving you a motherfucking warning to your fucking government. We're going to change you. Well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm located at 205 116th Avenue. I'm scrapped, and I'm going to blow your fucking piece head off. You understand me, bitch? We're going to change your fucking government. Can you take my threat seriously, you stupid motherfucker? No. <laughs> Can you connect me with the... F Listen to me, bitch. Do you have an emergency? I definitely have... <laughs> Her voice says it all. Do you have an emergency? <laughs> Even she's over this bullshit at this point. <laughs> I have an emergency. I'm going to blow the first pony's head off. Can you let them bitches know I'm located 205 Avenue. Skin proof, bulletproof, I'm going to fucking change your fucking government. You understand me, motherfucker? Do you understand me, you working bitch? I'm gonna blow you, I'm gonna cut the fucking chief's head off. My name is Raul Antonio Hardy, bitch. And I'm gonna kill your chief. New York City, now, well, one, do you need to leave? Oh my God, I have fever to kill police. Listen, my name is Raul Antonio Hardy, and I live at 205 17 116th Avenue in the east side of Queens. Okay, 205 17 116th Avenue? Yes, uh, 205 17 116th Avenue. That's between Lawrence um, and Soul 5 Street, correct? Right, yeah, right. and if you bring the police to my face, I'm going to blow their fucking brains out. Can you let them know that your government is coming down? It could be today, tomorrow, I don't give a fuck. You understand me, you fucking sissies? Yo, Solomon, we're going to change the fucking government, you stupid working bitch. Can you let your fucking bitches know that? Please? Today is your fucking day to die, motherfucker. I'm right here. <laughs> Fucking hour and thirty rounds. <laughs> Damn. Well, I would hope that he was pronounced deceased after hour and thirty fucking rounds. <laughs> see this all right so it's in uh, buffer mode I mean due to the nature of the call they're going on they already should have had the cameras actively recording at this point um, this is stupid on their part to to not have them recording also um, I don't see a shadow 
indicating that any of them are carrying a rifle so far. I'm not going to be surprised to find out that there was not a rifle here. Uh, for some reason, I just don't think... Uh, I, I'll say that I don't know anything about New York police policies or anything like that, but based off all the videos I've seen of them, I just don't think they give patrol officers rifles or shotguns because I, I never see them pull them out. Um, even on stuff where they absolutely should be pulling them out on. This is definitely something you should be getting a rifle out for. Uh, going to a call, a dude's threatening to kill police, etc. Yeah, you're going to need a rifle for, rifle for that. Um, rifles dominate gunfights. They are far superior to pistols. Uh, they're more accurate and they have better incapacitating power. Raul! Show me your hands! Show me your hands! Also, um, you know, there's a possibility that, you know, they could have blocked this road right here, stopped a bunch of vehicles coming down until they could clear it to make sure that, you know, there wasn't going to be a gunfight and rounds potentially coming out here and hitting people in the street. Show me your hands! Me Show me your hands! Show me your hands! Get on the fucking ground! Get on the fucking ground! Get on the ground right now! Shots fired! No rifle, no rifle. Don't see any rifle in the shadow there. The other guy. Yeah, I'm gonna say there's probably no rifles at all. And what's the point of having the taser with the? Uh, the extended battery in there to carry another cartridge and you not even carry another cartridge. Like, that's fucking dumb. Ha! <laughs> check out his tattoo. <laughs> Michael Myers. the biggest fan of pepper spray being on the back of the belt like that. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> Who the fuck are you, Kevin Gates? I got two phones. Like, what the fuck you got two phones for, man? Like, I know, like, obviously I know the answer to this. One's a work phone, one's a personal phone. But like, you're rolling up to a scene where this dude has threatened to kill police officers, and both your hands are occupied by a stupid fucking phone. What's this phone going to do for you in a gunfight? Nothing. Um, I've talked about this before a couple times in other videos. Uh, cell phones are like fucking cancer, man. They really are. Um, and they, they've become such uh, an integral piece of our everyday life that I just don't think people fully realize this, the bad habits that they create uh, from their daily use of phones. Just like there's training scars, you do stuff in training uh, the wrong way and you do it multiple times, that's a training scar and that could result in you doing the thing that you did multiple times that you weren't supposed to be doing. Um, so a good example of that for uh, training scars is um, there's a couple guys who uh, trained to do gun disarms. You know, like someone's holding a gun in front of you and or holding it to you and then boom, you do some, some fucking kung fu shit and, and take it from them. Um, they would practice that a lot. Uh, they apparently did uh, BJJ kind of stuff and um, on top of their normal, you know, grappling stuff, they also did that kind of stuff. Well, they did it so much you know, they'd set to drill up and then reset it. You know, set it up, do it, reset it. Do it, reset it. Do it, reset it. Do it, reset it. And they could just do it so quick that when one would take the gun away, they would just hand it right back to their partner. And then they do it again. Take the gun away, boom. Then they hand it back to their partner. Set it up, do it again. Set it up, do it again. Set it up, do it again. Well, they did that so many fucking times it built up muscle memory. And then one day, it happened in real life. Guy had a gun on him. Boom, he takes the fucking gun off and he caught himself trying to hand the gun back to the guy. Because <laughs> that was something that he did over and over and over. Luckily, you know, he caught himself doing that and didn't give the guy the gun back. <laughs> um, another is uh, the story of the California Highway Patrolmen who um, were found with empty brass in their pockets. Now, uh, there's, I, I, I read two things about that. One, it never happened. Uh, two, that it did happen. So, um, I, I don't know. I wasn't there. I can't, I can't tell you if it happened or not. But the story goes that, uh, and this was sometime back in the 70s, highway patrol guys uh, go into a call. And um, they get into a gunfight with a couple bad guys. And the, uh, the highway patrolman return fire and when they go to do their reload they did what they did every time they was at the range and what they did every time at the range was they'd fire their revolver to empty open the wheel eject the brass out into their hand and then put the brass in their pocket why did they do that on the range? Because at the end of the day, they have to pick all that fucking brass up. And they didn't want to be bent over all day or squat down picking that shit up. It was a whole lot easier just to put it in their pocket and move on. Well, they did that so many times that in the gunfight, that's what they did. They took the time to empty the brass in their hand, put it in their pocket, and try to do the reload. Well, apparently they found a couple of them dead, and uh, they had brass in their pockets and empty guns. So, those are training scars. What is this? Well, he's not training to do this, obviously. This, that, but he is developing a scar at this point. Because this is bullshit that he does day in, day out, every single fucking day. He just doesn't realize that he's setting himself up to get fucking killed. So, cell phones. Do they help you in a gunfight? No. Is it your primary means of communication? In law enforcement, probably not. Security, maybe so. You have to break yourself of always having the phones in your hand. 
before rolling up on a scene somewhere, put the phone in your pocket. Or your vest, or your, your carry, wherever the fuck you keep the damn thing at. Put it there, before you roll up on a scene. That way you're not, dist- one, distracted. So number one, that way you're not distracted. Number two, you don't have anything in your hands that's not useless. Your hands are free and able to go to defensive tools. Think about how much you handle your phone day in, day out. Going to your car, leaving your car, going to the house, coming out of the house. Is that phone always in your hand? If it is, it should not be. You should not have it in your hands when you're in those transitional phases. And you sure as shit should not be having it rolling up to a call where a dude has professed that he's going to kill police officers. It intrigues me, too, that um, NYPD, there's just, like, all this different assortment of handguns. Like, a lot of times I see Glocks, but then sometimes you see, like, those old-ass fucking Smith & Wesson, like, uh, 5906 or something like that. Like, I see those, um, just, like, random fucking guns. So he fired the slide lock that first time. So I mean, I can't, I, I can't say anything bad about that reload because uh, he was on slide lock at that point. time around was he on side lock I don't know for sure try to pause it to see above his hand but I can't tell if he's on slide lock or not if he's on slide lock again can't say anything bad about the reload but if he's not on slide lock then how he did that reload I, I do I do not agree with So if, back that up so you can see it, if uh, 
he only fired a few rounds and there's still, you know, a round in the chamber and there's still some rounds in the magazine uh, that came out of the gun. And he ejected, potentially ejected, a magazine that still had rounds in it <clears throat> before he ever had a replacement mag up. That's backwards. You don't want to do that. What you want to do is when you decide that you want to do a reload, like you have not gone the slide lock, your slides forward, you believe you have some amount of rounds left in your magazine. When you choose to do a reload at that point, you take your fresh mag out, bring it up to the gun within your workspace, then you hit eject and slap new round, or sorry, slap new mag in the gun. What he did was opposite. He did that backwards. He dropped the magazine first, and then he went and found his reload and threw it in there. Well, if the dude started shooting back, well, he's, he's got one shot in that gun, potentially. And then he's got a hammer until he puts a new mag in that gun and turns it back into a gun. So, when you choose to do reloads, fresh mag comes out first. You bring it up to the gun in your workspace, hit eject, put new mag in, get to work. And when it comes to reloads, that's ideally you want to reload when you want to reload. It should always be on your terms. You fired a slide lock, that sucks. It makes it not on your term at that point because it's forcing you into a reload. That happens. Ideally, though, you fire some rounds during the fight. You assess the person. Do they need to be shot anymore? If not, you scan. Then you top off. And you top off the way I talked about doing it. Fresh mag comes up to the gun, hit eject, fresh mag goes in. When it's safe to do so, even if you think that you only fired two rounds, you, st you still top off. Even if you think you fired two rounds, because you may be wrong. You may, not have, you may not remember correctly how many rounds you fired. A lot of people, when they're asked how many rounds they fired after a gunfight, they get it wrong. Some get it right, but... Some get it wrong. Some say less than what they thought what it actually was, and some say more than what it was actually was. So you cannot rely on your mind to tell how many rounds you got left in that magazine. After you fired some rounds, and it's safe to do so, top off. That way, if the fight starts again, you got a fresh mag to start that next fight off with. I guess they're counting. I guess they're trying to figure out where the exact location is. Show, Show me your hands. Come out the door. Hands. Show me your hands. Show me your fucking hands right now. Hands right now. Hands right now. Hands right now. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. Ah damn! I can't that motherfucker's head off. Hands right now. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. Damn it, boy. Damn it. Holy shit. Mm. <laughs> God, that guy has no idea how close he took one to the back of the fucking head. Holy shit. Woo.
That's almost like he felt that fucking shit too. Like watch him like jerk. Get on the ground right now. God damn. Whew. Um so <laughs> this is why um Firearms. Once you've once you've mastered your fundamentals, right? Uh, you know you you know how to do the proper draw and go through the fast and uh, do your you know your reloads and your malfunction clearances and all that. Um, you can start moving into some more advanced stuff. And the advanced stuff, once you again have have pounded on the basics and and have uh, graduated up, so to speak. Um, some advanced firearms training should include scenarios that are similar to this, at least people being forward of a shooter, like this right here. And, um, not many places at all will allow for that. Will not allow for that at all. They say it's too dangerous. Um, but it is, if you can find a school that does it, um, it is probably some of the, the greatest training that you could get. Um, I don't want to say it's some of the greatest training you can get. It's, 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 it's valuable training that you can get. Um, <clears throat> one, um, as long as you're following the four cardinal rules, there is no danger to this. His muzzles pointed at this dude over here wearing the green, yellow, and black, or I'm sorry, green, yellow, and red. That's where his muzzle's at. That's where his sights are at. He's sending rounds that way. He's intending to destroy this target. He's not intending to destroy this target. He's intending to destroy this one. So his orientation right now is perfectly fine. This guy is far enough away from the muzzle. He's not, it's not an issue. Now, what's the benefit of having someone standing forward like this in a firearms class? Number one, they get to feel that concussion, that heat coming off that gun near them. And it stress inoculates them to where it's not something that is totally um, surprising to them. It's not shocking to them. Like, oh, I felt this before. I'm fine. Because I, I don't know for sure. I'd have to probably go back and look at the other videos. There might have been a person off to the side over here that when the shooting started, he felt the concussion and moved quickly this away. Let me see if I can go back and find a view. Might have been within this one. He's the one who moves completely out of the way. This guy shows up all the way towards the end, towards the end. Let's go to this one. So he didn't have anyone immediately to his right that could have caused him to go to the left really quick. I think that was just probably a instinctual thing for him to do. Just boom, move to the left. May not have been thinking about getting off the X, but it's just a boom, moving kind of thing. Let's just go back to the view that we want to stay on. Well, it's 
possible that when Don't this guy fired, that. his bullets were going so close to him that he was hearing the sound of the bullet going by. Uh, you can hear bullets when they go by you. Um, so he could have been reacting to that and then moving off of that side right there. But I'm not 100% sure if that's what was going on. <laughs> Fucking Michael Myers. Shit, what's this say? Something is hell. With what? Three David shots fired. I don't know what that says. All right, so I guess I went too far forward. Maybe I don't know. Man, that's close. Uh, so, um, like I said, the benefit of doing training where someone's in front of you, uh, one, if you're the person in front, you get to feel what those those sensations are like. That way, when it happens, it doesn't fucking scare and surprise you into making a sudden movement um, that you don't want to make. Um, and then, of course, being on the back side here, uh, you become very aware of where your muzzle's at. And you become very aware of whether or not your finger is on that trigger or not when good people are in front of you that you don't want to hit. And so you become better at becoming more safe with that gun. And um, throughout all that training, you, you realize that you should not be bunched up that close together because people can move suddenly. So you don't want to be so side by side someone that... Um, one sudden movement from them puts them right there in front of your muscle. You want to keep enough distance away from them to where you have good reactionary gap um, to that. So he fires the slide lock. Okay. So he fires the slide lock, and instead of topping his gun off, he keeps an unloaded gun pointed towards the threat and then gets on the radio. That's stupid. Um, he should have reloaded that gun first, put that gun back in the fight, and then start talking. And again, the holding the radio in one hand bullshit, that seems to be... Um, something that is done most by LAPD and NYPD. See them do this stupid shit all the damn time. I think it's incredibly stupid and should not be done at all. Um, lapel mics, shoulder mics are a necessary piece of equipment for two-way radios in public safety. It is absolutely crucial to have them on there. That way you don't run into this stupid shit right here. This hand, instead of talking on the radio, needs to be re reloading this gun. I'll go back to his reading. Where's that muzzle pointed at? 
there for a while it was pointing to him, even though the gun was empty. Um, you should be a little bit more aware of the muzzle and where it's pointed at. Uh, I, not a big fan of him being so close to him and having that gun basically pointed at him while he's doing that. Three David shots fired! Again, same complaint about using the freaking radio with a little pedal mic on it. I like how this guy drops down to a knee um, and is trying to brace himself. Potentially, looks like he's trying to brace himself up against this pole to stabilize his overall platform and make himself more accurate with his hits. In the coming weeks and months, the NYPD. So that's a pretty long, pretty long video. Multiple angles here. Um, yeah. I really wish I knew what this damn thing said. Head to hell. With I don't know. Road to hell. I don't... Does it say Ford? I can't see what the hell that says. This might be Road to Hell. I don't know. Interesting tattoo. <laughs> um, surprised that New York, uh, being as, you know, goofy as they are, that they wouldn't have said, oh, you got to cover that up. <laughs> Can't be having Michael Myers. People think you're a murderer. <laughs> All right, uh, that's it. So if you like what you hear and see, go ahead and give me a like and a share. If you have not already, hit the subscribe button. Stay tuned for more Monday quarterback videos. Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense. Thank you for watching.